Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at why James Bond likes his martinis shaken, not stirred. A properly made martini is mostly dry gin with a bit of dry vermouth and ice. Epicurious recommends five parts gin to one part vermouth. All three should be placed in a cocktail shaker, but rather than shaking, they should be stirred to gently combine the ingredients, and in fact stirred with a wooden spoon rather than a metal one to reduce impacting the drink's temperature. Shaking such a mixture would have several deleterious effects that would normally offend the sensibilities of a martini connoisseur. It would dilute the drink via melting more ice, make it cloudier via aeration, which result in the drink being served much colder than normal, and would bruise the included gin via the dissolved air. In fact, shaking cocktails is generally only recommended for those drinks that are intended to be aerated and frothy, like a Tom Collins or a margarita. Others are either built, such as a highball, where the ingredients are simply poured on top of the other in a glass and served, or stirred, such as the martini or a Manhattan. So why precisely would such a sophisticated man such as James Bond, who has impeccable mastery of culinary etiquette, repeatedly make the obvious faux pas of asking for his martinis shaken, not stirred. One prominent theory is that he was consciously trying to lower the potency of his beverage, thereby giving the appearance of heavy drinking without actually doing so, which could lull his nemeses into a false sense of security while also assuring he kept his wits about him. As noted, shaking the martini results in much more of the ice melting than with gentle stirring, ultimately diluting the drink and simultaneously making it colder faster. The line in Casino Royale, where he invents a drink of his own creation, Vespa, is often used as evidence of his preference for cold temperature. In Chapter 7, Bonds notes he wants a dry martini in a deep champagne goblet, three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure of Kina Lille. Shake it very well until it's ice cold, then add a thin slice of lemon peel. Got it? It has also been noted that Bond's preference of including vodka necessitates the extra chill on the drink to avoid having it taste like lighter fluid. Many martini connoisseurs would also argue that a vodka martini is no martini at all. Another theory notes that Ian Fleming, Bond's creator, switched to vodka martinis while writing the Bond novels, and perhaps some of his vodka was of an inferior quality. Sometimes cheaper vodkas, such as certain cheap potato vodkas, have a bit of excess oil in them, and shaking the mixture to create the emulsion helps hide that taste. Evidence to back this up is also found in Casino Royale, where Bond notes that vodka from grain, rather than potatoes, improves the taste of the drink. The third, somewhat more humorous theory, is a bit more complicated to explain. James Bond, like his creator Ian Fleming, seemed to enjoy a broad range of liquor. In the books, he drank scotch much more frequently than martinis, and his brands of choice included Macallan, Hague & Hague, Johnny Walker, Duas, and Black and & White. Bond also drank other whiskies, including Jack Daniels, Canadian Club, Old Grandad, Virginia Gentleman, Suntory, and Harper. In fact, Bond drank so much that in a highly entertaining December 2013 scientific report published in the BMJ, formerly the British Medical Journal, doctors opined that Bond was an alcoholic and headed for an early grave for this reason, if not due to his dangerous profession, or at least was likely to suffer from impotence, liver disease, and a variety of other health problems associated with intemperance with respect to alcohol consumption. According to the researchers who perused the James Bond novels for their data, over the one 123.5 days covered in the stories they looked at, Bond consumed an astounding 9,201.2 grams of pure alcohol in the various drinks he partook in. This means he drank an average of 521.6 grams of pure alcohol each week, an amount several times that recommended by the British National Health Service. They concluded their paper noting that James Bond was unlikely to be able to stir drinks even if he would have wanted to because of the likely alcohol-induced tremor. Shaking his drinks would have helped hide this fact from his adversaries and further help hide that he was a high-functioning alcoholic from his superiors. And now for a bonus fact. The name James Bond is actually that of an ornithologist. Originally, Fleming wanted James Bond to be a boring, ordinary man who happened to experience some extraordinary things. He knew about an ornithologist named James Bond from Bond's book, Birds of the West Indies, which he had read in his youth and thought that the author's name was one of the most boring names he'd ever heard. However, the boring name soon became rather exciting. Mrs. Ornithologist Bond actually sent Fleming a letter thanking him for using the name. 
So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that like button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also check out some of our other videos that are over there on the right. If you enjoyed this one, you'll probably enjoy those as well. And thank you for watching.